guys so this week is turning out to be quite a busy week for apple they just announced the new 13 inch macbook pro and yesterday they announced wwdc and today apple has released ios 13.5 public beta 3 now if you are a developer tester this is the same as ios 13.5 developer beta 4 so i'm a public beta tester for me this came in as ios 13.5 public beta 3. now i haven't yet updated and my iphone x is currently running ios 13.5 public beta 2. let's see how my device looks before the update so if we go into the settings and then go to general and then go to about we can see that the software version I have with beta 2 on iOS 13.5 is 17F5054H. We have an H at the end and this has been one of the worst versions I've ever tested. So many bugs and even a serious issue that I'm ahead to make a video on. And then if we scroll down a little bit and see the modern firmware version, I currently have three dot zero five dot zero zero and also the storage that i have on this device available before the update is 17.98 gigs now if we're to go into the software update section here we can see that yes the update is available ios 13.5 public beta 3 now this for me comes in at 180 megabytes now this is for the iphone x and this is just a case that i have on so let's go ahead and update and see what major changes come with this ios 13.5 public beta 3. so let's update so our device has just finished updating it took about 30 minutes to update to the whole software and as you can see your iPhone has been updated to iOS 13.5 so this is iOS 13.5 public beta 3 that I have here now now let's unlock the device and see what has changed and any new major features and changes that came with this update so if we unlock our device right here and then if we go into the settings and then go to general and go to about we can see that the software version we have here is now 17F5065A. Now, when you have an A at the end, in terms of stability, that's the best and most stable beta version in all the beta versions. And it also goes to mean that we might actually be closer to an official release date to the general public. Now, whether this release is going to be iOS 13.5, we don't know. It can be iOS 13.5, the official version, or it can be iOS 13.4.2 as it was skipped. So expect something between those two, either 13.5 or 13.4.2. And then also if we were to go down and go to where it says modem firmware, we can see that we have 3.05.00. Now before I had 3.05.00 and so there is no change. I am going to be testing and see if I have any issues with my cell, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and so on. I was having uh, Wi-Fi issues with the previous beta so hopefully this fixes the issue. I know the modern firmware didn't change so we shouldn't really expect a big change when it comes to these issues but with the previous version also nothing changed but then as i updated i got a wi-fi issue so we'll test that out and see if anything changes and then also we can see that the storage that i have here is 18.86 gig before i had 17.98 and so you can see that i gained quite a lot of megabytes by the way it's close to a gig and this is something that's expected with this beta version the higher you go the more storage you gain in return so that's something that you expect when you update to this ios 13.5 public beta 3 so keep that in mind and check your storage to see if you do gain some memory back and then also if we were to go back and see my battery percentage now before this update i had my battery uh, maximum capacity health on 88 percent and right here we can see that my maximum capacity health remains at 88 percent so the metric responsible for calculating the maximum capacity didn't change anything so 
when it comes to battery performance, that's going to take me like a day or two to be able to tell if there's an improvement or not. But anyways, make sure you subscribe to the channel for that and I will do a follow up video in a day or two. Now. I noticed that this update didn't really come with much. Also, Apple didn't tell us much with regards to this update as to what changed and what didn't change. But something that I noticed is if you go into the settings and then go to privacy and then go to health, you can see that the exposure notification logging in for Rona is now by default turned on. Before with public beta 2, that was actually turned on by default, but now it's turned off by default and then when you go into that section you can see that it's not available in your country you now need an application in order to enable this um, setting in your device this is an application that's basically going to be approved by your government it can be from your local government or one that the local authorities approve now something else that i noticed that changed with this update if you uh, stay into settings and then go to health you can see that you know you now have a health profile that's associated with your health details that you input and then you have your medical id below that so if you click on your medical id and i'll have to blur this out because this is personal but then you now have this option here where you can show your medical id even when your device is locked so you can change this unless you go to the top corner then press edit and then that's when you'll be able to uh edit this and switch it on or off so that's something new that came with this update that i noticed now when it comes to performance i did run geekbench score i'm using geekbench 5 and for gpu performance i scored a score of 3378 now gpu performance or compute performance is the performance that um, has to do with your graphics and 3d image rendering this is the performance that you can see with your naked eye. So if your GPU is performing slowly, you can be able to tell. Now, this score here, comparing with the average iPhone X score, it's slightly above average. We have my score as 3378, and the average iPhone X GPU score is 3190. So that's good when it comes to GPU. However, when it comes to um, CPU performance, my score is very low. Now, I did run Geekbench score just a little while after the update, and the score that I got for single core is 807, and for multi core, I got 2423. Now, if we're to compare the single core, we can see that my score is right there and the average iPhone X score is 918. So I'm below average on single core, close to a figure of 100. And then for multi-core, I scored 2423 and the iPhone X average is 2370. Again, I'm below performance by a figure close to 100. I don't know why that is so when it comes to CPU performance. I'm going to be testing further and see what are the causes of this. And for that, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated when I do that. Now, that's most of the major things that I noticed that changed with this update. This is iOS 13.5 public beta 3 this is the update that i'm now going to be using on this iphone x for some days i'm going to keep you updated with what's new and new bugs as i use it on a daily so thank you very much for watching and for reaching this far into the video if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe down below and stay safe and i will definitely see you in the next video peace